a Yakuza member, a cartel member, and a Nazi walk into a bar. Oh wait, there's no joke here. And it's not a bar, it's a class. A high school class to be specific, with a potential love triangle. Now this is epic. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your Everyday Nerd, the show we just have to talk about comic related TV shows a lot, apparently. I'm your host, Zach Snyder, and today's Trading Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. If you're new around here, on Tuesdays, we try to keep up with the trends by talking about the latest and greatest in all of nerd culture. I recently got an email from Humble Bundle about one of their newest comic book bundles featuring the Image Comics Deadly Class Volumes 1 through 7. I had never heard of it before. But there's a TV show adaptation that just released on sci-fi and I thought, hey, I can watch the pilot, read a little bit of the comic, talk about it, do an episode on it, be a sellout by telling you that you can get volumes one and two for only one dollar or the entire seven volumes for only fifteen dollars by using the link in the description box below. Like I said, I had never heard of Deadly Class before, but I'm always down to check out things that I know nothing about. This school trains creative problem solvers to master the deadly arts. Deadly Class is a comic book that started in 2014, published by Image Comics. I'm mainly going to be focusing on the new 2019 pilot though, so minor spoilers for that episode. Deadly Class features a teenage orphan named Marcus who burned down his childhood orphanage and now lives on the street. But one day, after smoking some bad weed, he's about to get called by the cops, only for a group of teenagers to help him escape and bring him to a secret school designed to train assassins. The school is led by Wong from Doctor Strange. I just hope we get lines as magnificent as this line. I wouldn't say no to a tuna melt. Right off the bat, this concept is the most interesting part about it. The high school has a number of cliques ranging from CIA, FBI, rich kids, to the drug cartel, the Yakuza, and even neo-Nazis. It's a little wild, but I think it's gonna make for some really unique character interactions throughout the show. Unfortunately, while I am excited about this concept, it could also end up falling a little flat on its face, keeping in mind that this is a high school with teenagers, you know, the people who hate life because of hormones and angst. Basically, I'm worried that this unique concept may just end up being a way to have a whole lot of high school drama between tropes play out. And even in the first episode, we already get what looks like a potential love triangle between Marcus, Maria from the cartel, and Seiya from the Yakuza. Speaking of the characters though, for the most part, I like what they're doing here. There's this character, Willie, who's a part of a gang called the Final World Order. He's about to kill a dude, and then we find out that in reality, he's a and he ain't built for the streets. If that was me, I would have popped a cap in his ass. You know what I'm saying? I'm joking. Calm down. Jeez, mom, if you're watching, I'm sorry. It got, it was, it got a little out of hand. Really? My computer? Gotta make a noise in the middle of my recording? Anyways, I have a feeling he'll be cool to follow throughout the show because he mentions that his mother was a real gangster, so that's probably gonna play out somewhere down the line. Maria is also pretty dope. She tricks our main character, Marcus, into fighting her boyfriend, Carlos. Again, this is kind of along the lines of high school drama tropes, but I thought it was fine, and since Marcus does have a Hispanic heritage, one that seems like it'll be compelling to unfold, I actually kind of buy this potential relationship, even though they're high school kids. Let's be honest, high school relationships aren't real. The acting from these characters is solid sometimes, but it's a bit rocky other times. I never felt like the writing was particularly bad, but the delivery of certain lines, especially for the actor that plays Marcos, just was not good. You know, this all seems really sane and, and normal, and you all look like a fun bunch, but uh, whatever this is, later days. And this is where I'm a bit on the fence with this show. Like I said, the concept is really dope and I really want to see how more of it plays out. But some of this line delivery, oof, I wish it was a lot better. There's also been this trend lately where shows featuring teenagers think that they have to use profanity every 10 seconds to get their point across. Titans did it, which was just one of its many faults. But there's a few times in Deadly Class where the word is used and it just sounds dumb. I'm, I'm not completely against the use of profanity, I think they're just words that can definitely make or break a scene when used in an awkward way. Again, take a look back at the Titans pilot to know exactly what I mean. Something I do really enjoy about this pilot though is the amount of style it has. 
There's an entire flashback scene about Marcus's parents and how they were killed when he was young. This was entirely animated in the style of a comic book, which is super dope. There's a scene at the beginning of the episode where Marcus smokes some laced weed and he starts tripping, and this is shown through the visuals. I'm always down for some psychedelic imagery. Everything in this show exudes style, which I really do enjoy, but I can't help but think, is this gonna be a case of style over substance? In fact, there's already a few important plot points that just kind of get passed over. Things that I was confused about until I read the first issue of the comic book, like Marcus's ass in the assassin school, what his future goal in life was, and it's to assassinate Ronald Reagan. By the way, this show is set in 1987. He doesn't explain why he wants to assassinate Reagan. It just kind of comes up randomly. But then if you read the comic, there's like a clear reason behind this goal. I feel like we'll probably get more background info on Marcus as the show continues, but it's just one of those things that kind of confused me. Going back to the style right quick, the first scene in the show is brilliant. Benedict Wong is teaching the class when the Nazi gives Marcus a note in class. By the way, we don't know any of these characters, so we don't even know that this is Marcus's first day in class or that this chick is a Nazi. But then Wong hits the f out of this chick and you're like, whoa, that's not okay. But then you realize she's a psycho bitch and then when we get back to the scene later in the episode, we also know that she's a Nazi. So like, you know, it ends up being really funny. It's a great first scene that really got me interested in the show from the get go. Before we wrap everything up, I will say that I read a bit of the comic book and I really like the artwork in this. This is my favorite part of it. Image Comics does a really good job of finding captivating stories with incredible artists. It's why I still eventually want to read The Walking Dead and Saga. These pages are sprawling with color and aesthetic, and I really hope that we get some more animated scenes like the one we already got, but with more of these bright and interesting colors. Overall, this is just the pilot though. While I'm sitting on the fence now, that could definitely change when the second episode drops. It's got a compelling concept with interesting characters and a lot of style. I just hope that it doesn't end up being another teen drama with poor acting. I'm gonna read more of the comics so I can get more of a feel on the story, and what's really dope is one of the writers of the show is also the writer of the comic, Rick Remender, which means that if the comic is good, the show should also be good too. If you're at all interested though, I would recommend checking out the first episode and seeing if it's something that you might like. It's free on the sci-fi website, and if you want to read the comics, then uh, stay right there for my sellout section. Well, I guess I'm a sellout now. This episode of Your Everyday Nerd is brought to you by the Humble Bundle, Comics Bundle, Deadly Class. Featuring all 35 issues of the comics so far, you can get one of three affordable tiers to catch you up on the Deadly Class story before the rest of the show comes out. For only $1, you can get volumes one and two. For $8, you can get volumes one through four. And for $15, you can get the entire seven volume set. Keep in mind that these are digital, but that does mean you can read them anywhere, on your computer, your tablet, and even your smartphone. If you were to get the physical copy of each volume, it would run you over $160. So for only $15, this is a great deal. If you do decide to purchase this bundle, you'll also be supporting your everyday nerd. That's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you didn't, for whatever reason, you can hit the dislike button. Let me know if you're gonna watch Deadly Class and if you've already seen it, let me know what you think about it down in the comments. I'm probably gonna do a season one review when it's finished if I end up liking the next couple episodes. Go ahead and subscribe for more Your Everyday Nerd and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.